Hi friends, my name is Akil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial, I will show you how to download files from SFTP server using csharp.net or SSIS. So I was getting a lot of comments from multiple people to make a video on downloading that files from the SFTP server and unfortunately I was not having the SFTP server so that's why I was not able to make the video. But recently I learned how to create an SFTP server on Windows 10 machine and I also created a video on how to create an SFTP server on the Windows 10 machine. So I will share the link of the video like how you can create the SFTP server on your Windows 10 machine. And then in this video I will show you how you can download the files from the SFTP server. So let's jump to the demo. I have Win SCP client installed on my machine and using that client I can connect to the SFTP server. So let me just try to connect to the SFTP server using the Win SCP client. So I need to give the host name. So let me just open the command prompt window. To get the IP address of the machine, I can write IP config and then this is the IP address of the machine. So I can copy the IP address from here and then I can paste it here. I can type my username for the machine on which the SFTP is installed. So my username is HP. I can provide the password here and then I can click on login. So now you can see that I am connected to the SFTP server. So on the right side this window is from the SFTP server and on the left side this is from the local machine. In this video actually SFTP server is installed on my same machine. So I want to download the files which are situated in my C location. In the C drive there is a folder files folder. So I want to download the files from the C files location to the D files location. So if I open the D files location. So if you see here in the D files location there is no files available here ok. So I want to download the files to this particular directory from the C files location. There are two CSV files those I want to download ok. So there is a DLL which we will be using here to connect to the SFTP server and then download the files from the SFTP server. So this is the DLL rancy.sshnet. So now we need to register this particular DLL to the GAC global assembly cache. So we can register the DLL using the Windows PowerShell. So you can type PowerShell here and then right click on the Windows PowerShell and click on run as administrator. Click yes. And now here you can just execute the query which is used to register the DLL. So I have already written the query here. So I can copy the query and then I can paste it here. I will share you the DLL and as well as the query to register the DLL. So you can press enter. So now you can see that the DLL has been registered into the GAC. So the GAC is true. So now you can close this particular window and then you can close this window as well. So I will be downloading the files to the D files location. Alright. So let me first show you creating a C sharp console app and downloading the files using the SFTP server. And then I will move the code to the SSIS package in the script task. I will show you downloading the files using the SFTP server. So first of all let me type visual here and I have visual studio 2019 instance that I will be using today. And uh, I can click on create new project. Under project type I will select console app and I can click on next. The location that I will select is d.net location and the name that I want to give it to is the this one how to download files from SFTP server and now I can click on create. So this will create a blank console app and where I can write the code. So the blank project has been created and I have already written some code and I can explain you the code what we are doing here. So I can copy and paste the code into this particular location. So I have pasted the code. Now some of the components are not making sense because it is saying that the type or namespace is missing. So what I can do I can go to the references and I can right click and add reference and then I can browse the file that I downloaded the DLL file that I downloaded and I will share this DLL as well with you. So I can select this DLL click on add. Okay. So now this rancy.ssh net DLL has been added to the references and now if you see that it is saying that there is some issue so show potential fixes. So we can click on this one using rancy.sshnet. So now this one has been added here using command. So now it is saying for the stream so system.io is required. So we can click on show potential fixes using system.io. So all the errors are gone now and this is the path of the SFTP server 
and this is the username for the SFTP server and this is the password and the remote directory is this one C file so if you see here in WinSock so this is the directory from where I want to download the files and there are two CSV files here okay and the local directory to which I want to download the files is this one D files location and at the moment in the D files location I don't have any file okay so what we are doing we, are, we have declared these variables here and then we are using this method SFTP client method and then we are passing the host name username password and then we are connecting to the SFTP server and after that we are getting everything from the SFTP server then looping through all the files and then we are checking that if the file length is greater than zero then we are using a stream class here which is used to create the flat files locally and then we are using the download file method which is able to download the data from the SFTP server so this is the code we can call this particular method in the main class so I can write download file and semicolon so this will download the data from the SFTP server to the local machine into the D files location so let me execute this particular C sharp console app and it should download the files so the process ran fine and uh, I can check that in the D files location the two files have been downloaded from the SFTP server so the file should have some data in it yeah they contains 500 records in each file so this is good so I can just delete these two files from here so let me do one thing let me create an SSIS package and then use the same code in the script task so I can just open the visual studio 2019 and then I can click on create new project and maybe I can copy the project name from here I can select integration services project next the location I will use is SSI tutorials and then I can give the project name click create this will create a blank SSI package alright I can close this window getting started because we already started a long ago so I can just drag and drop the script task into the control flow window and then I can configure the script task maybe I can call it like download files from SFTP server okay and then I can right click and click on edit now I can click on edit script so this will open a script editor for me alright so the script editor has been opened up and the first thing that we need to do is right click on the references click on add reference and then add a reference to the DLL that we downloaded from internet click ok so the DLL has been added so now what I can do I can copy the code from here the whole function from the C sharp console app and then I can add the function here in the SSIS package and then I can go back again and I can just simply copy all the using statements from here and then I can expand the namespaces and replace the existing namespaces with the new one okay now if you see that all the errors are gone and now what we need to do we need to call this particular method inside the main function so I can just call it and I can put a semicolon here so now our code is ready to be run so I can just click on exit click ok so this will save the code inside the script task inside the SSIS package so our SSIS package is ready to be run and if you check again in the D files location there are no CSV files and let me execute the SSIS package which should download the files from the SFTP server to my local machine so if you recheck it so now you can see that the SSIS package has downloaded two files from the SFTP server to my local machine into the D files location so I think that's it for today's video and I will share all the code with you so that you can download it and you can use it in your environment but before that you need to of course create the SFTP server on your machine and if you already have the SFTP server then you can use that server as well so I think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video thank you so much